Welcome to Nightcap Live. I'm Dan Dunn, your host. Uh, tonight on the show, we're going to be drinking this, Rugal, 1888. We're going to be drinking it with the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond, the star of Somebody Feed, Phil the Great, Phil Rosenthal. Uh, also joining us on the show tonight, James Darcy, who is the Rugal. I always mess up. He's like the all-being master of time, space, and dimension CEO of Brugal, I believe. No, no, that's not it. He's the uh, portfolio brand ambassador. I want to pump his ego up too much. Um, got some business to take care of here at the Top Show. Quick reminder, Father's Day is this Sunday. Forget the power tools. Forget the Hawaiian shirts. Get your old man Flaviar membership. It means every quarter, every quarter, that's every three months, he's going to get a complimentary bottle, a tasting box, his choosing, unless he's old and feeble, then you choose it. He's not going to know the difference. Um, if And here, I get a special deal for you, just coming through on the transit here. If you make your father a member now, right now, you get a free upgrade on his first quarterly bottle. And what that is, is a bottle of 100% rye from our friends at Whistle Pig. It's called Piggyback. It's delicious. Dad will really know you love it. Or he'll can feign loving him by getting him that. Um, so go to flaviar.com right now, get a digital gift card for your pops for Father's Day, Flaviar membership. All right. As always, we're giving away some free stuff on this episode of Nightcap Live at the end of the show. It's going to be a Flaviar membership. And the other thing we're doing, Brugal has provided us a little goodie bag. It's going to be a bottle of this. Am I doing that? Is that good? Yeah, there we go. Oh, Bali 1888 and an ice mold. Signature ice mold. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it looks like. It's going to be ice. I'm going to get that. So here's how we're going to do it tonight. Here's how we roll. Phil is the star of Somebody Feed Phil, my favorite show uh, that has to do with, with the culinary arts and travel. So Phil hosts a food show. Somebody feed Phil. That's what he helps. Food and travel. So our tonight, what I want you to do to try to win these two prizes, there's going to be two winners, is chime in in the comment box there to the, that way or that way, one of the ways. Chime in with the top three TV food personalities of all time. Top three TV food personalities of all time. No pandering to Phil. I'm going to say that right now. Do not put Phil on your list. I will throw that right out. OK. Um, and again, you're going to put that in the comments box to the it's this. Is it this way? That, am I doing this right? Yeah, that way. OK. Um, and you can also chime in with questions for Phil, comments for Phil and for James Darcy as well. Uh, speaking of, of comments, um, and, you know, so many things in life seem to have changed overnight for all of us. But I take comfort in the fact that some things never change. For instance, internet trolls remain the most consistently reliable assholes around. Internet trolls are still out there. So we get questions and comments on this YouTube channel. I also get them on my uh, Instagram and Twitter, which is at the Inviber. Bring it on, bring it, I'm ready for you. So I, I, I actually wrote down a few of the, the, the comments we got here from the trolls about what we're doing here at Nightcap Live to uplift everybody. Here we go. Here's a couple of them. One is, you ought to call this show Nightcap Dead because watching Dan Dunn is murder. That's funny. <laughs> uh, it's not that I don't like you, Dan. Oh, wait. Yes, it is. Okay. That's funny. This show makes me pissed that I only have two middle fingers. <laughs> and I don't know what makes Dan so stupid. But whatever it is, it really works. And finally, oh, this is my favorite. Dan Dunn is so full of shit, he makes toilets jealous. Hmm. Okay. So much love for me. Uh, again, if you're looking for more ammo, you want to you wanna come at me, you want to beef, check out my podcast, What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn. It's available everywhere podcast stream. The guest on the current episode of What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn happens to be the guy I'm about to introduce right now. He, as I mentioned earlier in the show, he created one of the, the, the greatest comedies of all time. Certainly one of the biggest. It's seen all over the world. 
he was it's the star of the documentary Exporting Raymond, and now he is the star of Somebody Feed Phil, which is available on Netflix. Season three just came up. Please give a warm Nightcap Live welcome to Phil Rosenthal. Oh, hello. How are you, man? Oh, boys. Dan, thank you for reading my emails to you on the air. <laughs> you, I knew it was you. I knew it was you. Hi, so, guys. How are you? How you doing, does it, man? Does it help that I'm drunk already? What? Already? Well, we are drinking rum from the, uh, from the Dominican Republic, and you know what Yo, they say, Yo, ho, ho. Yeah, you know what they say? You can't spell drunk without D-R. Joking. Okay, all about responsible drinking here on Nightcap Live. Responsible yeah. drinking. Uh, speaking of drinking, Phil, do you want to you wanna raise a toast here, my friend? I do. Look, I got the bottle. This is one of the best things about being on this day. <laughs> is you get a bottle delivered the day before the show. And they say, don't drink it yet. You're going to want to drink it on the air. So here we go, boys. Oh, okay. this is it's sealed in wax on the top. All right. I'm going to hold this up so everybody can see it well. Oh, that's oh, one of my favorite sounds. Sound. You know what that that... When I when that happens, my wife comes running. That's how I got her. Phil, have you been to the Dominican Republic? Oh, oh people. Looky, looky. Look, it's beautiful. All right. I have not been to the Dominican Republic. Cheers to your faces. Cheers. Look at you nice fellas. Hello. Have you tasted this before? I have not. Oh, it's delicious. Here goes my first taste. I'm hearing you. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. I'm not just saying this. This is the smoothest, the smoothest rum ever. I mean, there's zero burn. It's yeah. mellow, right? I would, I mean, wow. I'm not even a rum guy. Now I'm a rum guy. From what Phil, you need to get, when, when all of this passes, you need to go down there. It's a beautiful facility down there, the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is a incredible country. I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, it's legal prostitution everywhere, which is nothing to sneeze at. Side note, I'm, Phil. I'm not you, listening to you. Okay, but if you were to sneeze after that, you should see a doctor immediately. Um, Listen, speaking, I heard speaking, something about prostitution. <laughs> well, speaking of cheap sex, there's another thing, and I want to talk to James when this comes on. One of the great things about the Dominican Republic is uh, uh, something called mama wana. Have you ever heard of mama wana? It sounds a little like marijuana. No, mama wana is a, is, a, uh, is a drink made in the Dominican Republic um, that supposedly uh, has aphrodisiac powers to it. There's, it's made with rum, I think red wine, honey. They put it in a bottle with herbs and tree bark, and they just let it all steep for a long time. And the mama wana is supposed to be kind of like the natural, you know, mojo down there. So if you go to the DR, you have to try Mama Wana. Have you it's tried it? As, oh, yeah, I've tried it. It's not as good as this, but... Uh, this is... Know. Okay, so I don't know anything about this. This is very good, right? We're going to get to that in a couple minutes, Bill. I want to... When we get James on here, I want to get to <clears throat> you first. And let's talk a little bit about what's going on. Some right. feed Phil, six episodes. I've watched them all. Yeah. I did one, and they are... It's such a great... Man, and especially right now, it's such a great escape to watch those shows and to, to really dream about the days that we're going to get to do that again. You're That's in Chicago, exactly. Korea, uh, what else? London, where else were you on this season? Marrakesh. That's right. And Montreal, right? And there are going to be five more shows coming in the fall or the winter. I can't tell you where, and I can't tell you exactly when they're going to drop, but we filmed them all already. Uh, we got in just under the wire, like in mid-January, we finished filming the ones you see now and the, the next five. And I couldn't be more excited for you to see them. And you're right, Dan, I want people to watch it, not sad uh, that they can't travel right now, but knowing that you will get to travel again. This will end. This terrible plague will end. As soon as there's a vaccine, you're coming over. <laughs> I'm coming over. I'm coming to, to Marrakesh again, and I'm going to go to Italy again, and we're going to travel again because we love it. And take this time now, watch the show like you always have, and write down where you want to go and plan your trip. We have time now to plan. Well, that's the beauty of what you do. And, and obviously, there have been others that have done that as well. But you bring a real uh, enthusiasm to it that I, that I just find 
you know, so refreshing. Uh, you, you love it. I, I can tell how much you love the, the food that you're trying and the people that you're meeting, place you're going. And I do that, man. When I watch the show, I make little notes. I'm like, right. Right, I want to go there. I want to I want to try army stew or army soup. That was in army that. stew. That's right. That's a Korean thing. That's uh, 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 when the when the American army was there, they kind of passed this recipe on to them. And it's made with a lot of uh, inexpensive ingredients like spam and hot dogs and, and bologna and stuff like that. And it kind of got people who were impoverished through the hard times. But like a lot of great recipes, it's born out of hard times because what they do is they add the sauce to make it all delicious. And they add the noodles and they add the vegetables and everything. And it's irresistible, army stew. And it's one of the most popular dishes in, in all of Korean cuisine. In fact, here in uh, Koreatown, there's lots of places where you can get it in L.A. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, I, just watching that alone made me want to hop on a plane and head over there. Um, so you got that going. You're, you got some new episodes coming up. I, I got to ask you, man, and all the times we've talked, have, have you ever, are you thinking about doing another comedy again? You thinking yes. about doing another series? Yes, always. It's yeah. just that, that it's a tough sell also. Uh, show business, I, you know, I always say I love every aspect of show business except the business. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. It's how it's it's it just that's a necessary evil. You got to get through the the business is actually the thing that makes it the hardest about making the show is the business. Well, you you created one of the single most successful shows of all time. And I think of you. I actually watched an interview with Jerry Seinfeld, who also created a very successful comedy. And I Jerry never heard. Yeah, never heard him. Hey, he's a yeah, comedian. But he was talking about um, when he was pitching comedians in cars getting coffee. And he would sit in the room and the, the execs would look at him and go, ah, I don't know if, you know, you should. And, and Jerry said, look, I'm not trying to get an ego here, but like, I created Seinfeld. And you're telling me what's going to work. And I got to figure you probably have a lot of meetings like that as well, where you go in and you have, you know, 28-year-old executives looking at you, telling you, yeah, and it's not going to work. Well, here's what I would I would equate my experience with what Mr. Seinfeld was probably going through as well, which was they know he created Seinfeld. They want him to do it again. They don't want him in a car with coffee with comedians. <laughs> That's not proven. Right. Yeah. So same for me. First of all, you're the writer of Raymond why would we want to even see you on camera? And why don't you just make another Raymond? That way everyone will make a lot of money. That's all they care about. Yeah. And I didn't want to do the kind of sitcom that they wanted me to do now. It's like they want, we'd like you to do another sitcom, but it has to be like this now. What do you mean like this? Well, it's got to be, you know, edgier and hipper and it's got to have, you know... <coughs> Uh, a lot of sex jokes in it, and it's got a, which I'm not opposed to. It's just not my forte. Raymond was kind of a family show, a sophisticated, we thought, family show. But any sex jokes we did were kind of uh, innuendo and kind of went over the child's, if you were watching with a child or your grandma, went over their heads. And that's how we like it. We actually considered that good writing. Subtle. Not blunt. Now everything is blunt. So it's not for me. So the shows that I would present them were more in the style of Raymond, and they didn't want them. And to be fair, I didn't want the type of shows that they wanted me to do. So I thought, if I'm going to stay in show business, why don't I pick the wall I want to beat my head against, a wall I really, really like? So that was this. That was, and it took me 10 years to get uh, the food and travel show. No kidding. No kidding. no kidding. no kidding. Yeah, it takes a long time to get your, to have your dream come true. But if you're focused and you're persistent, right, you start learning what to do, what not to do. I did little experiments with video. I went here and there and I made clips and some worked, some didn't. And I honed it and I honed it and I honed it until I found the buyer. Amazing. Right? That was it. By the way, you mentioned sex jokes. Have you heard the one about the booze writer who went to the Dominican Republic? And? I'll tell you after, I'll tell you after the show. One did thing I involve, do- Did it involve legal prostitution? Uh, yeah, no, I will give you one tip for the DR though, Phil. 
because, you know, like half of the players in Major League Baseball are from the Dominican Republic, from this yeah. tiny little island, right? So this is what you do when you go to the Dominican Republic. Any, any even halfway decent young athlete that you see down there, just get them to sign a baseball, right? <laughs> just get them to sign and keep the baseballs. I'm serious, because odds are there's a future Hall of Famer in the mix somewhere. So why, do we know why that is? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. If you're out there, Pepe Ortega, I'm pulling for you, kid. Come on. <laughs> Eight years old. You should see him swing a bat, Phil. Oh, my God. I got him. I'm ready. I got his ball there. So, anyway, on that note, let's bring on somebody who's probably been to the Dominican Republic uh, more than both of us and who can uh, can talk us through this rum, because that's where we want to go right now, Phil. We want to go into the rum. Oh, I'm um, here, baby. I'm here. Yeah. It's he so good. Por portfolio brand ambassador for Brugal Rum. Uh, James Darcy, how are you, James? Hey, I'm well, thank you. How are you gents doing? James, we love your product. My gosh, you know, I made it all myself in my basement. Pretty great. <laughs> what, what, it, says, it says 1888 on my bottle. That's right. Uh, what is that about, 18, James? Oh, I've got 1888 too. This is perfect. <laughs> um, 1888, we've been around since 1888. Um, our founder, uh, Don Andres Brugal, founded Brugal in... 1888. Where? Is, we have it right here on the front of the bottle. Where was it founded? Got it. So uh, the gentleman himself, right, Don Andres, he was actually from Spain. So he emigrates from Spain. Like this is this is way back when. This is obviously prior to 1888. I mean, I think I think about this. Van Gogh's probably just lost his ear. Darwin's just put together his theory of relativity. Yeah, theory of relativity is coming around, and he emigrates over to Cuba. Joe Biden was born. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he jokes, political jokes. Yeah, Joe Biden. Yeah, there we go. I'm good for sex and politics. And when we uh, actually, and we'll, we'll get back to the sex side of it when we get over to the marijuana as well. Um, get to Cuba, there's a little bit of unrest. So moves on along and then actually ends up in uh, Puerto Plata, right? So ends up in the Dominican Republic. You get to the Dominican Republic and you're going to see a lot of sugar cane back then. I mean, it's it's a lot of sugar cane. And uh, the wonderful thing for us with him being, you know, founding the business there is that there's still a lot of sugar cane there today. There's a lot of places and a lot of rum that just don't have the luxury of having locally grown sugar cane from which to make their rum. So uh, a family story. We're on to our fifth generation now. Um, it's still a family making the rum in, in this traditional way. Um, and it was interesting hearing you speak, Phil, you know, saying that really when you're trying to make, you know, the shows that you're writing, you're really talking about sophistication and having something that's, that's really subtle and not blunt. You know, Brugal for me is this stylish and sophisticated Dominican rum. Um, and we have like th that signature warmth and woodiness that goes throughout it. And we've been doing this for over 130 years now. And we've got no interest in changing things except for the 1888, which is actually relatively new for us. And this really is, is what brings this uh, double aging process and unlocks this great complexity. And as you nailed right in the head, this smoothness to the rum as well. I mean, you might think I'm not a rum drinker, but once you put this on the palate, you're like, oh boy, I'm a. I'm a rum drinker. Oh, no, that, that's very, very good. Because most rums, I think, uh, Dan, tell me if you agree, they're like almost over boozy rum candies. <laughs> yeah, you, you will encounter more often than not um, that sweetness. Yeah. Then that I find a lot of times with, with, it, with the aged rums, they, they tend to be a little too rich for me. Like syrupy. Right? Yeah, and Brugal has really been, I mean, I, I went down there back, I used to write for Playboy, and this is back in the in the early aughts, and I think I was down there probably around 2006 or 2007, and I've been a fan of the rum ever since because of that very reason. It's not, it's not, that, it's not overly sweet, don't get me wrong, it's, there is a, certainly a sweetness in here that you expect from rum, and that, that sweetness for me always triggers it's that's the beauty of it is it triggers this it's just the feeling you get immediately when you have it like i feel kind of like i'm in the caribbean almost see but i would not mix this rum this no is a yeah. zip drink like a fine scotch or a, a fine tequila or mezcal it's beautiful and you really i was so gonna say i was gonna say if i'm wrong here correct me if i'm wrong here but i believe the way that they recommend you drink this is at Caribbean room temperature, which is warm. Yeah. Almost. Really? Like, like that, 
balmy temperature, that, that slight kind of warmth of temperature really just releases different flavors and aromas within the rum. And I mean, you know, you, you gents are doing my work for me, you know. Let me, sit, let me sit on this bottle for a while. I'll make it all balmy. Warm it, warm it up a little. Yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> so, like, you're really picking up, like, the biggest things that make the rum what it is, right? Yeah. It's not really, it's, it isn't actually really sweet, right? Have another taste. Have a, have, a, have, a quick, have a quick nose. I'm going to pour my glass. Put it on the palate and pay attention to how it feels on the palate. Think about it like you would a wine or, or, or other, other rums if you want. Right? Sweetness is when we feel that sugar on the tip of the tongue. Actually, not a whole lot of that sweetness on the tip of the tongue. No, right? and it takes a while for the alcohol to hit your tongue as well. Yeah. And it's, it's so smooth. And that's the thing, right? We distill this. Like uh, in the DR, we'd say it's um, ligero y muy limpio, right? So it's clean and very pure. And this really light spirit, the key, and this is the key to what happens, right? We're putting it into ex-bourbon casks. And then afterwards, we're continuing the aging process in Spanish sherry casks, right? Oh. That double aging process is what's bringing the complexity. Thin. It's bringing all of the, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say things. I don't know how you gents feel about this. What do you smell? What do you taste? Well, I'm getting, I'm definitely getting, I kind of get banana a little bit. You get a little bit of banana, okay. Yeah, and then. I'm getting like the most subtle caramel. Love it. Some vanilla. No, right. And that's coming, that's coming from the sherry casks, right? Well, and this is the thing. Chances are the vanilla is probably coming from the ex-bourbon casks. And then from the sherry casks, we're probably getting more of those dried fruit notes. Like for me, and I was, I was chatting with uh, one of my colleagues today, the biggest thing for me, I always get a lot of coffee and a lot of toffee. I can't get away from it. I always, the first thing I get, coffee and toffee. And after that- Toffee goes to the caramel that I'm tasting, right? That's it. And then after that, I'm maybe like, you know, dried fruits, like raisins, maybe some dried figs. For me, like being English, it's a Christmas fruitcake, you know, yes. like a Christmas pudding. I don't right. expect a lot of people to know what that is. Um, but that that for me is what this is. It's, and that's so, the sherry richness. But this is the high end thing. How much is this bottle? Are we allowed to say? Or we don't we don't talk about that? Well, I, I, we, we do. I don't know how much it is. Yeah. Which oh, gosh. Um, so you're, you're going to be finding this probably around about f where, where you're living, right? Where, where are you, yeah. gents? You're out, on, out in California? Bill lives on yeah. the top of a giant hill in, in Bel Air. <laughs> when you fly in LA, you see this fortified uh, mansion. on set. That's Phil's place. Come right in. And then my face is on a beacon <laughs> like Batman. But it's it's him, face. Raymond, uh, lives right next door. Uh, you know. Um, you're one of those people on that big mountain that you have in America, right? There's these people, they have their faces in the side. I've Phil's in one, you're in one. Uh, I mean, chances are we're going to be finding it probably would be like, it'd probably be like 40 bucks, 45, oh. like up, up and down. Like, Wait a minute. That's, I'm actually shocked. That's a, that's a bargain, yeah. Dan. Yeah. Things to remember as well, right? You know, we're aging this in the Dominican Republic. I mean, these are, this is a sun drenched aging. You know, you compare this to somewhere like, you know, Kentucky. It's or, like that. It, how quick? How quick? I mean, I mean, we could be talking like one year for five years if we we're referring to Scotland for exactly. aging. Yeah. Right. You know, one year is five. This is fun. By the way, you... I want to remind everybody, Phil, real quick before we go, go further, is the contest tonight. You, you can win a bottle, this, the 1888 tonight, mm -hmm. along with a, uh, an ice mold. Oh, there it is. There they are. So, hey, yeah. So we're fifth generation. Our fourth generation, um, well, one of the one of the uh, fourth generations called Don Nano. He um, he's kind of like our, our man about the town in the Dominican Republic. Everybody knows him, um, and his favorite way to actually drink 1888 is with some uh, a little bit of coconut water. So we thought, you know what, we're going to honor him. Cocoa. This guy. There you go. And so freeze, you know, freeze it. Get some coconut water. Freeze it in the spheres. Put it over ice, and then just let it, you know, very slowly melt into the glass you're not adding a huge oh, amount of this wow, that sounds just amazing. a little bit at a time you know? i need this i need so this. that you can win that you can win the 1888 and the ice mold and you can also two prizes tonight and we're also going to flavor membership again phil Wait, host, somebody feeds phil I, I want to chime in enter you're in phil you're in. we already got you uh the top three what was it top three food personalities tv food personalities of all time phil and james and i will pick the winner very scientific process. And by the way, we got a lot of people coming in with questions right Do now. It. Do yeah, it. Let's, let's hear it. Here's let's one for you. People. For James, can you explain what's the difference between rum from Jamaica and rum from the Dominican Republic? Got it. So, um, so what I'd say is that first off, 
rum has very few classifications, like legal classifications. It it is the wild west, and you can kind of do to a degree whatever you want. That being said, typically people are going to expect from Jamaica that it's going to be probably coming off of a pot still, right? Pot stills, um, you know, a kettle. You you put something in, you boil it off once, and then you have to empty it. It makes it like it's very very heavy, very rich, very robust style of spirit. The way that we're making our rum is it's it's not like it's been boiled twice or three times to make this rich spirit. It, it's happening continuously again to make that very light and very pure and very clean style of spirit. So somebody could rock up tomorrow and make you know that in the dominican republic somebody could turn up to jamaica tomorrow and make something that's very very light and clean no one really has to stick to any regulations and things with this but historically speaking that's what it really is it's, it's down to the ways in which you distill and the funny thing is that if we wanted to actually with our stills we could choose to make that spirit too it's just it's never what we've been done we, we make it very specifically for what we want to deliver um you know one is not better than the other i particularly obviously um in love You're with partial it. to this style. Yeah. Because otherwise I want to join the company that I joined, but you know. So that, that was a question from Marie Fitzpatrick. And we have two similar, Leanne T uh, and Rob Gleason basically asking the same question here, which is, um, is there, a, is there a, what cocktail would you make? If you were going to make a cocktail, mm -hmm. what would you suggest? And then Rob's, that was Leanne. And then Rob's question was a little more specific. Is there, a, is there a cocktail that is, that is specific to the Dominican Republic? That you would that's popular in the Dominican Republic that you would make with this with the 1888, mm. Mm. or are you just going to um, do it? You just suggest neat and warm. <laughs> so um so so first try and neat. If if you're using this, if you, if you get a bottle, if you win a bottle, congratulations. If you don't win a bottle, go buy a bottle, open it up. Um, try it neat first is my recommendation because it's just incredible neat. It's so complex, it's so smooth that double aging just just brings us to here. If you're going to have it in a cocktail, I don't like to play around with too much in there because it's it's so robust. It has so much flavor. I, like, I really want to taste that. Funnily enough, like one of my favorite cocktails is called, like we call it the nightcap or a nightcap. So it's pretty fitting. Really old fashioned variations work incredibly well. This rum, instead of using sugar, maybe use something like some Pedro Jimenez as your sweetener. So you could pick up a sweet sherry, maybe like, you know, 10 milliliters. What's that? Two, two teaspoons of um, of that. And then a couple of dashes of chocolate bitters. Oh, all day every day sounds great um honestly i know i know for a fact that just so many people in, in the in the dr that i know um honestly do drink this with coca-cola if i'm being very honest they have their very particular ratio that they like to use that's the way to go um but yeah for me neat old-fashioned variations like i love it that way phil do you like to i mean obviously you get to spend a lot of time watching great chefs in there do you like to experiment at, with at home with cocktails with spirits and and are you kind of a uh, more traditional in that way, or do you like? Do you ever get in your home bar and just start playing around? I don't. I'm um, not really a chef, and I I have great respect for great chefs and great bartenders. You know, this is now an art form. It's incredible to me. Uh, we just did one of these charity dinners, and and the mixologist sent along pre-mixed tiny bottles of drinks that all you had to do was shake them up and pour them over ice. And they were phenomenal. And I couldn't make these drinks. Anything with more than two or three ingredients, I'm lost, right? But I, I love invention, great inventions. I, I, I would not waste this rum on Coca-Cola, right? I would use a much, a much cheaper if I just wanted a, a drink like that, which I don't, it's too sweet. But I would try your coconut water formed into ice and plop that in here and that that might be fantastic Start well, james, on that slow and gentle release yeah. right yes. james i'm wondering though and i you know i hear this from so many of the master distillers master blenders anybody i meet in this business along the way every one of them ultimately says the same thing however you want to drink it yes is how you drink the very first person that ever yes. said that to me 20 some years ago was Booker No, the great, oh, yeah. late, great Booker No from Jim Beam. You know, we all want a Booker bourbon. And I, I was saying the very same thing with Phil. I said, I don't want to, I don't want to pollute this by putting, and he said, he's got that mumble. He looked at me and he says, son, you drink that any way you like it. You know, and it's like my, my, 
my mom, my mom drank it with ginger ale and some tea and this. And, and he goes, any way you want to drink it is how you drink it. So I don't think people should ever be ashamed of how they want to, how they want to experience it. Yeah. No, but you're right. But, yeah. but certain things are wasted, right? Yeah. Like yeah. people, a, a little education is okay too, right? Sure. I mean, why, you know, I, why, I have why, two why, rules. And that? you're breaking one of them. I have two rules and you're breaking one of my rules. My rules are that first off, you should drink it how you want to drink it. And second off, you shouldn't tell other people how to drink it. Right. That's my that's my only other rule. Don't do that. Right. Actually, I do have another rule, which is about drinking it through your nose. If you like take a big breath too quick, that's a slippery slope. Don't go down that road either. But, yes. but for me, however you want to drink it. But I mean, to your point, Phil, you know, depending on who you're with, if you want to have a lot of Coca-Cola, maybe you want to do that when there's no one else around because you might be berated by people like Phil. Who knows? But do you I mean, there's a there's a certain logic. I'm, uh, yes, I'm all for whatever works for you. But would you light a fire with hundred dollar bills? Yes, if I could. No. If you, could. Bill, you know what I mean. I do not drink this with Coca Cola. I have exactly. the meat. Exactly. I have it. I have it with very small amounts of other things in there. Like I'm a hundred percent with you. This is how I like to drink this. And honestly, I, most of the time, I kind of just. I mean, you say I've got it in a wine glass today because I. Like, sometimes I just like to have it in a big balloon glass. I can get all the aromas coming out of it. I. I just want it how it is. Yeah. Certain things make sense. I'm yeah. gonna make a promise to both of you before this, before this episode is over, I'm gonna march in. I'm gonna get myself some ice and some coke, and I'm drinking some of that with ice and coke. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you how great it is. You're living large, Dan. Phil, That's we got a lot like of questions coming in. He does for not you care. That I want to throw out for you. First off, uh, Jennifer Hodge wants to know uh, the favorite place you've ever traveled to. It's like Italy. Your, your favorite place? Yeah, Italy. 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 Italy wins. Right. Here's why. Okay. Everywhere you look is beautiful. Every bite of food is delicious, and everyone is hugging and kissing you. So what's not to like? Love it. Love it. And then uh, another one that we have is uh, that was kind of along those lines was where oh I lost it. Oh, uh, Alec Garinger wants to know what's one city you haven't been to yet that you most want to visit. Shanghai. That's okay. a good one. Mumbai. Right, Queensland, New Zealand. Uh, there's a lot. It's a big world, people. Season four. To see. Look for it. There's in a season lot four. to see. There's a lot to see and do. I've only scratched the surface of the earth. Um, Paul Sandoval is asking, how amazing was it to drink the Vesper made by Alessandro? Oh, oh my mm. God! This person knows what they're talking about. Have you gentlemen been to Dukes in London? I, yes. I watched. This is on the London episode of of the current season. Yeah. Which There's build. a man, a genius called Alessandro. Speaking of people who can do things that I can't do, he makes what I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the world's best martini? That's how it's commonly understood to be. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's gorgeous. Dale DeGroff made me a martini once. I, I throw that up there. But yeah, you know, they're all good, those guys. When you get to that level, you're certainly tell the yeah. people. Tell the people what's in a, what makes a Vesper martini. So, you want to go ahead? Yeah, so, so it's, that, it's that James Bond classic, right? Where we're, we're really using, and people mess, mix around with it today, but we're using gin and vodka and we're using Lillet. I mean, Lillet's recipe changed a number of years ago, so a lot of people will swap it out for something else, like to give it a bit more bitterness. But it was, it was that classic, you know, shaken, not stirred martini where we're not using a dry vermouth, we're using this um, almost like an aperitif wine. But it's supposed to be stirred, not shaken, isn't it? They got it wrong. Well, and that's the thing is that in the obviously in the in the movies it's shaken, not stirred. But yes, like all, everyone will say that if you're going to be having an all spirit drink, stir the thing, don't stir shake it. the thing. Yeah, because again, it bruises the gym. I'm not going to tell people of what they should do, but I never I, myself. Uh, I have no trouble telling people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> tell them what to do. Uh, Laura Strauss wants to know, Phil, you always have a friend along, and they meet you on the trip. Are people begging you to tag along? And don't mention when I begged you. But yes, do you do you have a lot? If, you know, I know you've had throughout the years our our mutual friend Tom Caltabiano, Allison Janney has joined you for some things. Um, uh, oh man, help me out here. But you've had a ton. I've I've had people offer to just carry the bags. Can yeah. we just carry the bags? It's very nice. It's very sweet. And believe me, again, I'm the luckiest guy you're ever going to meet. People, so I get it. I get it. I know you want to come, but listen, don't, I would only make it worse for you. Go on your own. 
<laughs> in, go with your loved ones. Enjoy. Go with your friends. You're going to have such a good time. Yeah. James, where are you based, by the way? So I'm based just uh, just around DC. I'm living just over the border in uh, in Maryland. I can pick. Right. I see it. That's the accent. I knew it. I was like, "What is that it's accent?" A, I, see it. <laughs> I know. All right. All right. Uh, he wants to be near the action of Washington. <laughs> Again, everybody, I invite you to chime in. The three best food personalities of all time, TV food personalities. You can win a bottle of Brugal and the ice mold, and you can also win a Flaviar membership. It's coming up not not that far away. We're going to be giving this away at the end. I of need the that show. membership, Dan. I hope I'm getting a membership for being on this thing. Phil, I've. I will. I know some people, and you know, I probably get at least a twenty percent discount. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you, James. Uh, with with a, what's the difference? Would you say between making rum from sugarcane and molasses? Yeah. Um, so really, what you're ending up with. I mean, the it's it comes down to the, obviously the, there's the fermentation side of it, right? So what we're doing here is we're taking something that has sugar in whatever form it is. We're basically adding yeast to it, that old science thing that you did at school, you know, biology, chemistry, whichever one it falls into, yeast, sugar, CO2, alcohol, and then we're finding ways to concentrate alcohol, right? So we're yeah. basically making a big, a massive beer, and then we're just reducing it down until we have like, you know, rum, um, and we're aging it too. Not everyone's doing that. Um, so really the big thing is that the, the molasses is, um, because it's, it's, I mean, molasses is, you know, a, a byproduct of making sugar, right? So it's this thick, syrupy mess. Um, you, you end up with this kind of like um, more robust base, right? That that first beer that you're going to make, if you like, is going to be much more robust. Whereas when you're using sugarcane juice, like pressed juice, it's going to be much lighter, much more floral. So that's the starting ingredient. There's many other steps from that starting ingredient to the end. If I said to you, gents, that really this for us, like this when it starts out, is a really clean and pure spirit, you'd be thinking, wait, it tastes really rich and robust and complex. It's like, yeah, that's true. That's coming from the aging and the way in which we make things. But for other people, they might be achieving that possibly in the way they distill, or it might be achieved in the way in which their base is. So, you know, it, they are different typically, those, you know, agricoles, those uh, sugarcane ones, typically a bit more floral. What about the, uh, the, the the kill devil? You know about this? Rum used to be known as kill devil. Yeah. What's that? Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, rum rum's gone through so many different. Well, no, the word rum that we have it today. There's still so much argument about where the word rum comes from. Whether it's from like R H U M, whether it's from rum bullion, whether it's all these different things. Um, I mean, even when you mention like the the marijuana, right? Um, this marijuana drink, you know, originally that didn't have rum in it. That only came post Columbus, I believe. Before it was more like a medicinal tea, and so we're really talking about it's, it's just those developments of language, Weird right? Name. Yeah. Well, either wasn't there's a Latin word, uh, saccharum or something. Yeah, there's that. There's that as well. That's some, another one. Yeah. If you if we can go back in time, we can figure this out, Phil. If you can travel down to the Caribbean and speak to everybody and set up a big argument and then let us know at the end of the episode, that would be really helpful. I'll get right on it. Thank well, you. I, I also, when I, I think it was in the DR that they told me this, that back in the 1800s, they used to use rum to, to clean their hair. I mean, it's been, it's been, I mean, you know, historically, like, you know, there's so much sugar cane. So you can produce a lot of rum. You get it, you end up with a lot of alcohol and you've got a lot of spirit. If that's something you have available to use, it's a travesty and a tragedy. I'm not a hairstylist. I don't know what a hairstylist would say about washing out your hair with alcohol. I, I use it to kill things, so I'm not my thing. But um, I'd much rather turn it into rum than use it for cleaning. But I mean, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. People have been desperate as it is. I mean, I'm sure we've seen pictures of people pouring out horrible vodka that they found in their, in their cupboards, hoping that it's going to do something. Uh, that Don't do that. It would take a long time to do anything. That's not me saying do that. Don't do that. Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But it was uh, rum was certainly uh, the British Navy used to give rum to oh. sailors uh, oh boy. To, for, uh, to put uh, vitamin C and they put citrus in there to prevent yep. scurvy. That was that's big... right. I mean, that's that's how a lot of our like basic grogs kicked off. And then, you know, as, as spirits change and, you know, different different things become popular. I mean, you know, the, like the birth of the gimlet and things like just the, the backbone of so many drinks that we have today really do come from these like basic punches. You know, where we're just taking some sugars, we're taking some citrus. The citrus was so important for our navy, um, and then of course all of these, um, you know, over like a lot of the overproof rums as well, and proof, right? They're, like in in the UK, we would say ABV. We do everything alcohol by volume. The states you call it proof. Proof for the, for England, which is a bit different than America, was about being able to prove 
that the spirit was of a certain strength by making sure that if you poured it onto gunpowder, the gunpowder would still light. Because you don't want to, you know, it's a twofold thing. You don't want a pile of rum barrels exploding on your ship, but you also don't want to be in the middle of a gunfight, find that your rum barrel or your sailors got a bit too tipsy, spilt it all over the gunpowder, and now all of a sudden your gunpowder is shot because you can't light it. So you wanted to pour it on, light it as proof that it was, uh, that it was still that strong. Ah, I learned something today. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey. By the way, Phil, just got word on my message board here. Flaviar has approved it. <laughs> You've got a mem. You are now a Flaviar member. Come on, Phil Rosenthal. Welcome to the club, man. Welcome to the club. Yes. Um, uh, Drunks Rob unite. You've done it. You've done it. Robert Marker, and I guess this would be for James. Robert Marker wants to know what's a what's a great food to pair with this rum. Good. Yeah. So this this for me is a DJ Steve. I, I made it into a parody, but this for me is my after dinner. Um, I, I do like it with a lot of different, especially chocolate desserts. I think it works incredibly, incredibly well with. Um, but it can equally go, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a meat eater myself. It does work very well with some pretty, like, big, rich preparations of steaks. Or if you're going to take something that's very rich and umami, like mushroom, like a big mushroom dish. If you're going to work on that side, you know, work on your sauces, work on the things that go well with the other flavors. But all day, every day, I'm I'm jumping in with chocolate myself, and I'm not a I'm not a big chocolate person, but this makes I me want. I am, and I you I'm about to have dinner, and I'm going to have this for dessert with a little chocolate ice cream. Well, Phil, uh, I pour the rum over the chocolate ice cream. People, come on! No. Rebecca Pearson just wrote in and said, "I love watching Phil eat." So you mind if she tapped <laughs> FaceTime with her? She says, I love watching there Phil are, eat. There were weird I, people everywhere. <laughs> well, no, she said, I can tell when he really loves something when he does the arm dance. What's the arm dance? Let's see it. Is this I when you... Know, just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, another pairing question from Paul Sandoval. He said, James, uh, what, what kind of a... Uh, would you pair a cigar with this rum? And if yes... Would you recommend a light, medium, or full-bodied smoke? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so you know, my, my first recommendation is always what grows together goes together. Get yourself a Dominican rum, uh, a Dominican rum, a Dominican cigar to go with it. Um, you know, regardless of your pref, you know, your preferences on cigars, what it's you're into. Um, this is a rich and robust cigar uh, rum. rum. That being said, I personally, when I'm looking for the pairing, because I don't smoke cigars very frequently. I know that if I have anything that's above mild, it's going to become so peppery to my relative palate that this isn't going to help with that. If this was a sweeter rum, this is a dry rum. If this was a sweeter rum, I could have something more peppery, more smoky, because the sugar's going to like hit it and cut it a bit. Right? It's a bit like spicy food for me. If I if I have you know if you have spicy food and something sweet, it cuts out the spice. For me, the same thing happens with a cigar. If I have if I have a big robust cigar and I've got a really sweet rum, it's going to cut it. The, I can I can do it. I have to have something a little bit lighter just because this for me, despite smelling of toffee and coffee and all of these like fudge notes, um, it's not that it's not sweet on the palate. It's it is a dry rum. I can detect a little bit of, of sugar, but really not a whole lot for me personally, medium minus, And I'm going to get something from the Dominican Republic. Phil, are you a cigar guy at all? Not at all. No, I kind of like the, the ambient smell, but not too much. But and not I'm not to, doing it myself. Not to do it yourself. Um, and yet, Rebecca wrote back again, can I please watch Philly? Uh, <laughs> I have a cracker. I have a cracker here. Um, so, uh, oh, Michael April said, wasn't he in The Sopranos? Michael April wasn't he the mo ball? Yeah, he wrote in and said, thanks for the perseverance, Phil. Can't imagine not having somebody feed Phil. Oh, aren't you nice? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, look, he's eating. He's eating for you, right? There it is. Look at it. I knew it. It was coming. Um, Hope you're happy. What's the equivalent for somebody drink, Phil? Where's the one where we see Phil go around drinking? We're doing I, it now. This is I, it. Here we are. See, are we going to do it in different? I think are we Phil doing it every week with different backgrounds behind us? Why not? Let's okay. Go. I'll be here next week. Um, one of the things I, I was also thinking about this, I was when I took my last sip. Are you getting any? Like the red fruit and like peaches in this thing as well. I'm that, so glad that you that, said peach. That means you've had too much. <laughs> right? It's it, I wasn't getting it at first, but now I'm getting it. I'm getting and, the fruit, and maybe it's you know, you know, Dad, you're, you're drinking Hawaiian punch. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a really key thing, right? Is that you? Um, I'm getting the fruit. 
when you first put it into the glass, it is going to smell and taste a little different than when you come back to it because your, your palate's going to change, but also just it, like, it's a super complex thing. There's so many different things going on in the glass. Different things are going to release into the glass at different times. At this point, now that mine's been in the glass for a while, I'm entirely with you. I get this stone fruit. I get this peach or like, and it's not next to It warms up, it. right? As it warms up a little. Like That's it. Saying. We're hitting that Dominican balminess, right? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the coldest day in, uh, I think the coldest day in the Dominican Republic is just about the hottest day in London which is my reference point after a decade there. So, you know, yeah, as this raises up in temperature, you're really going to get that fruit coming out. Oh, we got a comment for me uh, from Rachel that says, for what it's worth, I don't think watching Dan Dunn is like murder. Oh, oh that's a fan. You have a fan. Oh, you know, I, I don't know if, it, if it's been coming through, but my feelings were a little hurt by some of those. Did you read the message? I'm going like to not to be so, I'm gonna try not to be so harsh on the email. Phil, do you get, do you pay attention to any of that? I mean, between Raymond and Phil and between yes. somebody, do you pay attention to the, to the negative stuff that people say? Yes. And if one person sends a negative thing, it really hurts. Really? I can, I, it, it undoes all the positive. I With all the success positive, everything. One person says something mean, I cry. For real? No. Okay, because no, I mean, I've listened to like Howard Stern, for instance. Howard Stern will say, for all my success, I can't help but focus on the negative stuff. That's human nature. That's yeah. human nature. Because here's why. Because deep down you think, what if that's the truth? What if everything else is baloney? And that comment goes at your, the core of your own insecurity, your deepest fear. Well, every, you know, the story of Hollywood, everybody thinks they're a fake. We're all like putting on a, a, an act to, to get success, right? To get, you have to pretend to be good, in other words. But deep down you're not, or you feel that you're not. And so all of, all of humanity is a mix of ego and insecurity, ego and insecurity. And when they're too big on either side or both are gigantic. Well, there are certain presidents who have it in disproportion, right? Sure. Yeah. So you understand what I'm saying. So when you when you would watch an episode, will you go back and watch Raymond or when it was happening and you're watching or you watch somebody feed Phil, are you noticing the good? Or are you because I, I know how I am when I if I if I write it with my books and things like that. I, I don't look at my book and go, oh, man, that's a great chapter. I go, why did I say that? Why did I yes. put that one sentence in there? Yes, you have to learn, and I've learned this, to give yourself a break, right? Nothing's going to be perfect. You strive and strive. You want to make it perfect. And you have to appreciate when it's very good and appreciate your hard work because you work very hard. And when it, when it succeeds, when a little part of it succeeds, you have to celebrate it and be happy. And then when the thing that you go, oh, I wish I did better, yes, you say that, but you also let it go. You have to let it go. You don't want to be stupid enough never to notice the thing that wasn't perfect because you want to keep improving. But it's, there's no there. There's no like end point. There's no perfect. You're just striving to perfect. Well, you've... You've done a lot, Phil, and, and, and I got a great comment here from Amy Yakuboff, who said, uh, thank you, Phil. My grandma loved Raymond. Oh. She, was on a, she was on a first name basis with him. And yeah. that, that brings me to a thing where you, uh, it is kind of incredible to have created this character, right? That's so, and obviously Ray was of course. part of it. Of Ray, course. You know, but to have created this, this, all these characters from Dar, you know, everybody on down, that people think of, millions of people think of as kind of members of their family in a way. It's the beauty of television. It's the beauty of having a show that comes in your house every week for nine years. Of course, they're going to feel like family. You spend more time with them sometimes than your own family. Yeah. By the way, the secret of TV is that every show, no matter what it is, is about a family. Even your news broadcast. The reason you turn on one news broadcast over another is because you like being with those people, those people from the Today Show. We like that group. That's a family. It's all family. Yeah. Cop show, family. Yeah. 
Well, they're gone now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By the way, Phil, Medi- I was going to say, show, you might man. be able to sell a sitcom now because every cop show that exists is gone now. But we won't touch that. Um, uh, just Krish said, just tell them that only you look like Liam Nielsen. I don't know what that is. I think I think uh, Keith, our director, might be drinking some Brugal rum because he's sending through questions that make no sense. Keith, take it easy, buddy. Responsible drinking on this show. Um, guys, how do you feel about uh, we start um, looking at some of the contest entries? Yes. Uh, at the ones you want to keep and the ones you Do want it. to throw out. Okay. okay. We can uh, let's pick your gonna, winner. And then we got we're gonna have two winners. We got a lot of entries here. Um, All right. Okay. So, Alec. Okay. Again, the 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 question is: We got two prizes we're gonna give away. The, the, it was the three best TV food personalities, excluding Phil, because we already know Phil's on the Mount Rushmore. There's four. There's four people on Mount Rushmore. It's Phil. We want to know who the other three are. Okay. I'm on Mount Schmuckmore. <laughs> All right. So we'll just start the process of in the good bag or the bad bag, and then we'll, at the end we'll pick two winners. So we got Alec Garinger says Bourdain, Mary Berry, and Guy Fieri. I don't know who Mary Berry is. Do you, do, do, it's a great British Bake Off, man. Come on. Okay. All right. Hey. All right. Okay. So Bourdain, I think we can all agree Bourdain. Absolutely. I'm a big big guy fan. What I think about Guy Fieri is he, you know, obviously I think there's very, uh, it's a, he's a polarizing figure, I would say in this world, in in the world of of, of TV chefs. And, but Guy made food accessible to a lot of people. Yes. Oh, wait, Phil, I can only see your ear right now. Where, where are you doing right now? Yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now I see. Um, By the way, if you frost your hair a little bit, you're almost there. Yeah, yeah me? Got the guy look? Hey, I, I am kind of like, I am kind of a little guy tonight. Yeah, look at this. This looks like, I'm going to pull these up a little. Got my chains going. I got my tattoos. All right. <laughs> Show All right, us so your donkey sauce. So we'll say Alec, Keith, uh, put Alec Garinger in the maybe box. All right. SD says, Oh, I think you're going to lose here. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Emeril Lagasse, great. Love Emeril. Bobby Flay, great. Paula Dean, though, might be the problematic entry on this list, especially okay. in the current climate we're living in. I got to throw that one out, right? I th- Phil, are you with me on this, Paula? I'm this not going to disparage any of these uh, contestants. People. All right. And I'll... I'm very. For- I'm also forgiving. I think uh, Paula may have uh, seen the light. Okay. All I right. think. I'm not, maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. I don't it's know. The quantities of butter and cream in people's lives that worry me about yeah, this thing. And I don't think that that's changing. Yeah, she might be a mass murderer. When I say her name, I can feel my arteries hard. Yeah. Yes. Like, so, okay. So, uh, John, uh, I'm going to just kind of pick out ones that are going with different people here. Um, Laura Strauss says, come on, yeah. Julia Child, right? Of course. Right. Bourdain and that little British chap, Jamie. Oh, is it Jamie Oliver? Jamie Oliver. Okay, it's yeah. great. Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I like everybody. They're. They're, they're all going to be good. Uh, I. You. You can pick Dan. Pick who right, I pick. So, I just maybe because we can talk about some of these people. I don't know. Graham Kerr. Yes, the Galloping Gourmet. Do you remember that show? You're, oh you're, uh, my! Wow, that's a great so he one. Would, he would cook in front of a studio audience. And then he would make this fabulous thing, and he was very witty and urbane, and he would talk through the recipe, and, and he was very entertaining. He'd be drinking the whole time while he's cooking. Oh, it's right. And then when the dish was done, he'd walk to the front of the stage and take a lady from the stage to come up and eat the dish with him at the end of the show. And they loved it. They loved it. It was, it was like you win. Okay. Is that a good idea for a show? That's a great – so that's – Graham Kerr, Julia Child, and Bourdain. So uh, Thomas, that's the that's the reason the I would put give, that. Give that that's... person. Uh, Jacques Pepin, uh, Jacques Pepin, Julia, Julia Child, and Emerald Lagasse. This is going to be impossible. Let me find. Uh, oh, I like this one. Paul Sandibor says Bourdain, David Chang, Roy Choi. I, I great choice. All great. We gotta, we gotta They're have, all great. We gotta, you know what you got to do? You got to put them in a hat and just pick. 
You can't. Oh. You can't even go because they're everybody's good. You can't. It's luck. Gordon now. Ramsay, you Gordon Ramsay fan? He's very talented. He's very talented. Lots of personality. Lots of person. Alton Brown. Uh, also very talented. Who's uh, Max and Helen? That's those are my parents. Oh, ah, Jesus. they got away. They got, away. they got yeah. away with. They got away with uh, getting near me without saying me. By the way, can we? Did you see my mom's? A, my mom's box of soup. Yeah. yeah. Let's raise a toast to Phil's mom. Passed away recently. Cheers. Yeah. Yes. Mm. All right. Made a what great about matzo ball soup? Daniel Balud loved their matzo ball soup. <laughs> You're right, Phil. This is going to be tough. All right. I'm going to just try to find the ones that I don't know who these people are. Who's Justin Wilson? Nobody knows. That's from Missy Johnson. Who's Michael Simon? Oh, he's a chef. Yeah, I've met him. He's great. Okay. Oh, Rachel Ray. Sure. Uh, that's a good one. Wolfgang Michael, Michael Simon was on The Chew. Okay. Mary, uh, Mario Wolfgang Batali. Puck, Come course. on. Wolfgang you Puck would... is like, he's the, he's the, he's the, the grandfather of, of uh, the celebrity chef, isn't he? Which one? Wolfgang Puck. He's Wolfgang, like, yeah. yeah. This one was going for the loss, I think. Uh, Mario Batali and Paula Dean in the same one. Uh, I don't know. Hey, you're gonna... They like the controversy. <laughs> Adam Richman. All right, uh, Chef Jamie Gwick, Guy Fieri, Bobby Flay. Okay, man. You pick. Ugh. You may Ugh. as well just say, you know, like a pin, like a pin the tail on the donkey. Just pin yeah. it. Those so are the eyes. I'll, I'll solicit you guys for this one, help on this. Which should we give away first? Want to give away the Flaviar membership first or the rum? Well, the Flaviar is kind of a, a grand prize, isn't it? Where, where you, well, you're the getting rum. bottles every, every month or so, right? The rum is, yeah. It depends if you're going to get a bottle of the rum. You're going to get you a bottle of the rum. James is please like, put uh, this rum in my Flaviar uh, uh, subscription. <laughs> All right. Here's what we're going to do. I, I, I will decree here that we're going to give away the first thing we're going to do is the rum, 1888, yeah. and, the, and the ice mold. And I'm going to go with, man, I got to go Thomas, Thomas Verizima, Verizima with Graham Kerr. Julia Child and Anthony Bourdain. Congratulations, go. Thomas! You have won. Congratulations, the... Thomas! Yes, you won the goodie bag Here's from uh, from Brugal. And then the Flaviar membership. Um, was there anybody that I said that you? Oh, I you know I did like the guy one. Who's a Alex Guarnaschelli? Oh, she's a great chef from New York. Yeah, has a restaurant called Butter. But is she a TV personality? I think she's been on a bunch of shows. Yeah. I got it. All right. So what about Anthony Bourdain, Ina Garten? Oh, of course. She's, yeah. she's, she's famous. Yeah. Perfect. And Max and Helen. That's nice. I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like we got to give it up to Max and Helen and Anthony Bourdain, Ina Garten. Only uh, slight just, pandering. Slight. Yeah. Just slight. <laughs> that was it. Stephen Wu came in with that one. And Stephen Wu was very clever because I said, you can't do Phil. We do Phil's parents. So Pretty Stephen good. Wu, congratulations. You have won. You are now a Flaviar membership along wow. with Phil and I Stephen, and Phil. To you. I'll be drinking to you, Stephen. We're all in the same club. Yo um, ho, yo ho. So Rum, everybody. Come on. Phil. It's not just for Cokes anymore. That's my ad slogan. You can take <laughs> oh. that if you want. By the way, you two talk amongst yourselves for one second. Talk amongst your, you two talk amongst your, I'm gonna get that that's, coke and that ice. Okay. okay. That's, my new, uh, that's my new slogan for you. You can use it for coke coffee. anymore. Rum. It's not just for coke anymore. I love that. It's love like that. what I said about soup. Soup. It's not just for old people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, now, what's I, have to, I have to go soon. How about you? I got dinner. Why my family's here? They're waiting for me to have dinner. Really? Right now? Yeah, because uh, in L.A. it's 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 seven o'clock. Oh gosh! Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm so far ahead. I'm just trying you to are. keep. You're at ten o'clock. You're going to bed. Yeah, I'm just trying really to keep. Really, a nightcap for you. I'm just getting started. Out. <laughs> this is actually my nightcap. Yeah. By the way, the flamingos are so much nicer looking than Dan, don't you think? It's. I've been upset every time he sat down as to how much of his body was covering them over. He's a much larger looking guy on the screen than I thought he would be. Dan, oh, oh you're ruined. Dude. We left <laughs> <laughs> okay, quick plug for my friends. Q, 
I, I think it's very important. I think James and Phil will both agree. Don't skimp on mixers, folks, because most of the time the mixer is about 70% of what you're right. doing. That's right. You're right. So kind of you. You, can have, you can have the best rum in the world right here. That's right. You, you put a shitty mixer in that, uh, it's not going to be that good. So, all right, I'm going to, we're putting this to the test. I got some Q Cola. Q, what's that? Q. I've never heard oh, of it. It's a very, it? very fantastic. Hold it up to the they camera. make great mixes. One of my see. favorites. Yeah. I can't see so it. I can't see the Q. There you go. Okay, that's yeah. it. With a K, the cola. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to pour that in there with my Brugal. And here we go. Oh, my God. Rum and Coca-Cola. Come on. Oh, that's all? That is good. So I'm that's guessing that's a more subtle cola as well. It's not a super sweet cola. This is a, uh, it's a very crisp. The Q yeah. Cola is very crisp. And Never heard they're of it. Using, they're always using real products. You know, you're not going to find like high fructose corn syrup and all of those things. And it's probably, they're probably using, it's cola right with a K because they're probably using like actual cola nut. And yeah. Wow. yeah. You know what was in the original recipe of Coca Cola? Cocaine. Mm -hmm. Cocaine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. There's a mixer. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so, uh, James. Tell people where they can go to find the the Brugal. Like obviously on Flaviar, we're all gonna become members. Uh, caskers, maybe you got the Brugal in. Yeah, yeah, and you'll be able to find on Caskers. Um, honestly, like my my favorite thing to say to everybody or anybody is, well, right now I know you can't really go out to your local shop. Out where you are, go out. You'll be able to find all your local retailers on Drizzly sending it out there. Um, if you uh, if you do have like if you have your mom and pop that's near to you. It's readily available for them where they are. They, have, they would love to bring in new things for you. They don't have to bring in a huge amount. Like support your local businesses, especially during this time. Your mom and pop liquor stores. Um, I know a lot of people have been buying a lot of liquor to drink while they've been at home anyway. But continue to support your local store, whoever it is. And if they don't have it, just say, "Hey, would really love to try this. Can you just get one bottle in?" I'm sure that they can do it. That's my favorite way to try and like support your local uh, teams and families nearby. Do you want Great. people following you on social media at all? Hey, you can you can come and find me. I'm at Whiskey Darcy. Obviously, the rum itself tastes a lot like a uh, like you would if you're going to be drinking a whiskey. Yes. Um, no e, because I'm I'm normally speaking about Scotch more than I am bourbon. So Whiskey Darcy, W H I S K Y D A R C Y. Nice. And Phil, as yes. we mentioned, season three of everybody. Of, 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 I'm really sorry, of, huh, Hold on. Everybody. Uh, season three of Somebody Phil, Feed Phil is on Netflix right now. You can't now. speak anymore. Look what happened. I, yeah. and you can, so I was going to ask you, but I already know all your info. You can follow Phil at phil.rosenthal on Instagram. On Instagram all the yeah. time. Uh, Phil if you Rosenthal more, on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. If you want to hear more from Phil, as I mentioned earlier, he is on the current episode of What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn, available everywhere, podcast, stream. I want to thank both of you guys, really, for, for doing this with us. You know, it's been a lot of fun. So much fun. Hey, and so I, good to I, be with you, gents. So, so nice to meet you. And and uh, I, I actually really got turned on by this rum. It's terrific. Thank you. Yeah. Next week, we're going to be joined by Jay Flynn, who's the host of Virtual Pub Quiz, the best online trivia show that everyone can be part of. We normally do it on Thursdays. Next week, we're going to do it on Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and again, finally, as I always want to say, thank you guys for, for tuning in and making this what it is. We love doing it, and, and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you very much. And everyone, cheers. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. Wonderful. Thank We're you. Out.